Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on IST QB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in Chapter 3 talking about Agile testing methods, techniques and tools. And we are looking forward to understand the different questions from this chapter to try them answering without any confusions and with better confidence. So today we shall be looking at some more questions from this chapter as well. And uh, let's get started with our next question, which is question number 31. Well, so question number 31 is a little different type of question where they are giving you a lot of information with likelihood and impact. And at the same time, they're asking you what are the best, what the team should do with this information, right? Which is more of like a psychological and team management kind of understanding. And let's see what exactly are they expecting here. So given the following results from a product risk analysis that occurred at the beginning of the iteration, and there are some random six stories. Some of them are functional, some of them are non-functional. So we have performance, security, and two functional. Then we have another compatibility and recoverability. And there are some likelihood and impact which you learned in your ISTQB foundation in the chapter five that level of risk is determined by combination of likelihood and impact, right? Where likelihood is probability of that event to happen and impact is of course the severity. So if you see uh, the non-functional performance and security, both are high. The impact is high, likelihood is high. And then for the functionals, uh, for one, that is user story three, the likelihood is medium, impact is high. For user story four, the likelihood is high and impact is medium. When it comes to the other two non-functional, likelihood and impact both are low. Okay, so first of all, always make sure that you understand what is the question given to you. What is the data provided to you? And until unless you understand that, please do not jump to the options, right? Because until unless you understand the expectations or the ask of the question, you will not be able to answer the question at any point of time, right? So the most important thing is, of course, to understand the question and then get into the options discussion. Now here, if you say and look at it, you have five options, A, B, C, D, E. So you need to select two of them, right? because whenever you have more than four, they will always specify. I didn't have space to specify, that's the reason I did not specify, because if I add another one line, the font becomes very, very small, right? So I just want to tell you that they will be specifying that you have to select two options. So let's see what exactly are they asking you. Which of the following describes the best what the team should do with this information? Of course, point being made here is why a risk data is provided to a testing team. Of course, to mitigate it, right? The only thing what you will deal with is assess this information, understand this information, and then act in your testing according to that. Prioritize your test cases, uh, you know, execute the test cases, put the more effort, proportional number of test cases should be written for high and less test cases can be written for low, but it's proportionate testing. So there are a lot of things which can just happen with on this particular data. And let's see, because it's completely dependent on the options. So we have to read the option to get to the answer. So option A says, move on to the planning poker session to estimate effort for user stories and determine what can be done in the current iteration and what needs to be added to the backlog. Now that's a little interesting option because we need to put a little pressure to understand that is that something relevant to the risk? Because one side you're talking about giving you the risk details and second you're asking what the team should do with this information. So of course we can get into the uh, planning poker session to estimate the effort. Uh, the information from the risk analysis is basically used during the planning poker because the estimations are derived from these information itself. For without a risk, I would probably take three points to complete a job, but if there are risks involved, I may spend more time, right? I put more effort. So that's where I think this information would be very relevant. So the information uh, from the risk analysis is certainly used for the poker planning session to determine priorities of the items to be completed in the iteration. And only after the planning poker session, uh, the items be added to the backlog will be decided. And if it is determined that not all the items can be completed in that particular iteration. Because after you have done the estimation based on the capacity, you can decide what can be done in this iteration and what can be done next, right? And given that it is a risk item, you always do priority, as I told you earlier, right? So prioritization brings me up to do this work first, 
right? So I should always pick it up in the very next or upcoming iteration, that is sprint. So A looks pretty good as of now, but uh, let's be sure. So B, remove user story five and six from the current iteration and move to a later iteration. Um, just because it is low, it does not mean that it's the blind opinion that you should move things right to the next sprint or remove this from the sprint. Uh, at this point, we do not, do not know if we have time to complete all the tasks in the iteration because the poker planning session is yet to happen and until unless that happens, we cannot make that decision. So you cannot just blindly say that remove these two things because you're sure about it or just because it is low. No, it is a risk item and as far as you can accommodate it, you should accommodate it in the same sprint. But after you have done the estimation, you can make a decision. So A compared to B making more sense because A you're saying that we will do the estimation they will understand if what things we can handle in the sprint one and what we cannot handle will move to the sprint two. So making a direct statement that blindly just remove five and six is not a good recommendation. Okay, because it's not correct to say that. We don't know at this point of time how much you can handle in sprint one. Just because something is high and does not mean it will take a lot of effort to complete. Yeah? So we need to do the estimation and then take the conclusion. So B can be ruled out. C, because of number of high likelihoods, high impact risk, slotted for this iteration, the team has no choice but to extend the time frame of the iteration by two weeks. No, you never change the timeline of your sprints. They remain moderate throughout the release and the project. That means if it is two weeks, it's just two weeks, it's just the number of items, number of stories which you're considering will change. If they are, you're dealing with critical items, time-consuming items, maybe in the sprint one, you only have 10, 10 story. But in sprint two, you can have 15 stories. Sprint three, you can have five stories. So only the number of stories will vary. Your duration should not be hampered. So it is not correct. The iteration length of time is not extended just because you need to deal with something more complicated. You just take some of them. Don't forget the basic rule of Agile is to simplify your work not to extend your time, right? So that's where it is incorrect again. D, the team should collaborate on effective ways to mitigate the high likelihood and high impact risk. Of course, that's one of the generic uh, approach which we should use blindly that we should first collaborate together and then discuss about it and find out the different approaches, different methods, different techniques. How can you mitigate the high level risk, right? So I think this would be one of the strongest recommended approach for a team right now at this point of time that they should sit together, collaborate, and then come up, come up with the ways of how exactly they can go ahead and, you know, mitigate this particular risk. And uh, I think we almost got our answers, but let's check with E. The team should plan to complete all items in the current sprint, but save the lower risk items for the end of the sprint and only test these items if there is time. No, 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 no. Sprint planning is all about determining the number of items which you can actually complete. It's not about determination of if time permits me, I'll do that, right? A planning poker session should be held first to determine what can be accomplished in the given iteration. If it is determined that there is not enough time to complete, then it is supposed to be moved to the next sprint. But not like, just like that, you know, without doing any kind of estimation, you decide that lower risk items can be done later. It's, it's just that it is your time frame what accommodates things right so put together the right answer here is a and d that is a move on to the planning poker session to estimate effort for user stories and determine what can be done in the current iteration and what needs to be added to the backlog whereas d is another answer that is the team should collaborate on effective ways to mitigate the high likelihood and high impact risk this is what a team should do provided this information. Well, moving on to the next question, we have question number 32. And here is a quick example of a poker planning session. So given the following user story, that is, as the precedent, any data I upload should not be viewable by any other user of the system. I think this is a very straightforward line and clarity on the user story is provided to you that you are a precedent and if you're trying to upload any information on the system, it should not be viewable by anyone else in the system, right? Now, during the first poker planning session, 
The following story points were given based on the risk, effort, complexity, and proper extent of testing. That means you consider all the factors what you should have considered to estimate. Here, customer gave it as five points, developer gave it as five points, and tester, for some reason, gave it as 20 points. Okay, now what is the best outcome following the planning session? Following this planning session, that means based on this provided inputs from the three teams, what do we do next? Right, you should know what exactly is the situation and how to conduct park poker planning sessions. If you remember, we told you in, in advance, we, 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 we were covering the content that uh, whenever it comes to poker planning sessions, we always ask the team after explaining the story. If they estimate the same number of story points, we take that as the final estimate. But if the teams have variant or differences between their estimates, we look forward to have a discussion and that discussion brings them to the conclusion. Then we will ask them again, second round of estimation that, okay, now tell me again, what are your estimates? Then the team should have the same number of estimates. In case if it does not happen for two or three iterations, we don't continue beyond that. We just take the sum of all, like average of all, or we take the number one which has the highest because that shows the team does not have a good collaboration. Yeah, one way. It certainly means that you don't have a good team tie up. <laughs> You're not able to convince each other and other people are not ready to get convinced by you. So it's very important to have a good collaboration within the team. Anyways, now let's, after giving this conclusion and discussion, let me just look at the options, what we have. A, because the customer's and developer's size estimate match, the team can be confident this estimate is good and should move on to the next story. You cannot discriminate a team member. Okay, always remember that. However, it is just that two people are matching does not mean that I should never talk to the test engineer. A QA team is also contributing and if they think they are going to take longer effort to test this scenario, then we should talk to them always. Team is always a team, right? You cannot just discriminate one of the team member because today it is tester, tomorrow it can be developer who might be mismatching with customer and tester. So does that mean you will not talk to developer? Come on, you must be kidding me, right? So option A is totally irrelevant and we should not pick it up into our consideration. B, the team should hold a conversation to understand why the tester felt the story was significantly more work. Another round of planning poker should occur following that discussion. Exactly, that's the approach. So it's all about, do you know what is the process of poker planning? If you know what is poker planning, then you know what is the answer. If you don't know, you don't know the answer. Simple, okay? Let's check out C and D as well. C says because the customer owns the system in the end, the customer's estimate should be uh, to taken as correct when there is a conflict. Okay, come on. The customer knows the system. It does not mean that they really know everything what they need, right? Uh, because they're not going to implement. So the entire team must agree on the estimate for the user story. The customer alone does not understand the complexity of developing or testing the functionality. So in that context, just because the customer is someone who owns the system, uh, a blind supervision can be done on the estimations of the story. Okay, what's next? The poker planning session should continue until the estimated story points are an exact match between customer develop and tester. No, uh, it's not like continue forever because what if it takes 20 iteration, then we will spend our entire day doing an estimate for just one story. So it is not necessary that they match Sometimes you just don't get it. So a rule could be made that highest estimation would be taken or an average of all the three estimates will be taken. And this is maximum for two to three rounds, but not beyond that. Okay, if you don't get the conclusion in three rounds, max, you should stop that and take the average or the maximum and then move on to the next story. Okay, not like it's not an endless journey. So with that note, uh, the Right answer here for this particular question is B, the team should hold a conversation to understand why the testers felt the story was significantly more work. Another round of the planning poker session should occur during after that discussion, right? So I hope uh, we just tried answering two questions because of the, you know, time Again, we don't want to push you with many things at the same time. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. 
Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.